And now it's my real pleasure to introduce to you one of my personal heroes, Pam Marone. Uh, Pam is a local entrepreneur who has very deep roots in UC Davis and in our community. She's the founder of CE and CEO of Marone Bio Innovations, located right here in Davis, uh, which she launched three years ago. Pam's company develops organic and environmentally friendly pest management products that are made from novel biological sources like knotweed and citrus oil extracts. In November, Pam's company received the, uh, California's highest and most prestigious environmental honor, the, government's, the Governor's Environmental and Economic Leadership Award in Technological and Market Innovations. Pam has spent more than 25 years uh, in discovering and developing biopesticides. She was pre previously the founder of AgriQuest and the CEO uh, and chairman until uh, 2006, from 1995 to 2006. At AgriQuest, Pam raised more than $50 million in venture capital. She launched several successful natural pest management products, and she developed a pipeline of other product candidates. Before AgriQuest, Pam was the founding president of Davis-based Entitech, a biopesticide subsidiary of Davis, uh, Denmark-based Novo Nordisk. And from 1983 to 1990, she led the insect biology group at Monsanto. Pam's a member of our Dean's Advisory Council and Marone Bio Innovations is a Graduate School of Management business partner. And her husband, Mick, is a graduate of our MBA program. Pam's a recognized leader in her field. She serves on several industry and community boards, including the founding chair and member of the Biopesticide Industry Alliance. And more recently, she shared the Advocate of the Year Award for serving on the University of California President's Board on Science and Innovation. She has a Bachelor of Science in Entomology with honors and distinction from Cornell University and a PhD in Entomology from North Carolina State University. And I want to thank you, Pam, for accepting my invitation to speak to our graduates today. Please welcome Pam Marone. Thank you, Nicole. I am sure that it's the first time that the GSM has ever had an entomologist as their commencement speaker. Maybe in all of, all of UC Davis commencements. Uh, but actually, with a PhD in entomology, I've had to endure as a businesswoman my whole career the fact that I am a PhD entomologist and I don't have an MBA. So take heart. Um, uh, you have an MBA, students. So you have a leg up over what I have in business. And even those of you who don't have jobs, you can do anything with an MBA, especially with the UC Davis GSM MBA. And I'm even more convinced of that because I think that Joy and uh, Helen hacked into my computer when I was writing my speech because they stole the themes of my speech, which were sustainability, giving back, values-based leadership. Well, that means that, that the GSM has done a heck of a job, an amazing job of educating you for today's world and today's problems. So, um, I'm going to give some of the same themes today. Thank you, Nicole, for asking me to speak. I'm very honored and was actually quite surprised to be asked. I have have the privilege of being associated with the GSM since 1991, when my husband started here. And then I've had the privilege of working with two excellent deans, Bob Smiley and Nicole, and I look forward to working with the new dean, Steve Corral. I'm also a unique beneficiary of the GSM's programs, excellent programs. I had a management 240 student team at my first company, Antotech, and also one at my second Davis company, AgriQuest. Many of you do probably don't know what 240 is, but that was the predecessor to the consulting center that the GSM now has to help business do various projects. I've also had two teams from the consulting center, one at AgriQuest and one at my current company, Marone Bio Innovations, or MBI. And I've also had many GSM interns working in the company and also have hired a GSM alumnus in the past. And Professor Emeritus Dick Dorf served as the founding chairman of my current company, MBI. So thank you to the GSM for what you've given me. It is, you've already heard about the, uh, <laughs> the astonishing times we're, we're living in with business. Uh, you've, certainly during your times as, as students, you've seen amazing things happening. But even starting, you know, you are the post-Enron babies with Enron and WorldCom meltdowns, and now the meltdown of Wall Street and 
the banks and two car companies. It's an amazing and astonishing time to be in business. During the time that I've been an entrepreneur, I've experienced the tech boom and bust, the current economic downturn and everything in between. But in all of that tumultuous times, there is one constancy that I've had, and that is having a vision and then moving towards that vision with determination and passion. So being an entrepreneur gives you that constancy and being able to drive forward with something you love and in ways that are changing the world, which is what it means to be an entrepreneur. If you want to change an industry or change the world, then entrepreneurship is for you. But not everyone has the personality to be an entrepreneur, and that's okay. That's really all right. It's, it does take kind of an interesting, weird kind of personality to be an entrepreneur. So if you're not an entrepreneur, that's okay, as long as you're doing something that you're passionate about. During my career, I've learned many things about business and about people, and some of these lessons I'll share with you today. First, I hope you paid as much attention in your OB classes as you did in your finance classes. Sometimes OB gets short shrift, um, but the reason that you need to pay attention in your OB classes is that you often hear that, well, to be a good manager, you have to be good at, good at execution. Sure, that's true, but you can't execute unless you have people to do so effectively. The most difficult part of, of, of creating or doing anything in business is finding and motivating people. It's easy to manage people through fear and authority. Many bosses and investors, investors I've even had, you will encounter, that you'll encounter are comfortable with this authoritarian style. But that is really, really old fashioned. It is much easier to rule than it is to empower. Its uh, empowerment looks messy and chaotic to an outsider, but uh, it really gives you a lot higher productivity in a business if you empower your empl employees and you, rule through, and, you, and you lead through empowerment, not through authoritarianism. Now, once you empower people, you can't take it back. You can't then say, oh, well, I want you to do it my way. No, it doesn't work. Um, the results uh, then go down the tubes if you then con convert from empowerment to a fear-based culture. It is critical, thus, to find people, partners, and investors who share your values. You've already heard from Helen about values-based leadership. Have the people that you are associated with thoroughly bought on to the mission and vision and the values of your organization. It is not e easy to get everyone pulling in the same direction. I was naive to believe that everyone in business shares the same ethics I do. I think I can understand why there are so many business scandals. Even in my just little world of my industry, I'm actually amazed how many business people I encounter need to really reset their moral compasses. I don't have time for all the stories of things along that line, but uh, they do reflect that there's the larger problems that we've seen in business of late. They are most often a result of self-interest decoupled uh, the, and money decoupled uh, from ethics and sustainability. You've already heard from our student speakers and from provost, the provost what sustainability is, and by that I do mean, along with what they've said, the triple bottom line or the three E's, economic, environmental, and socially equitable. Sustainability is a much bandied about word right now, but it is the word to describe how business must operate in today's world. All the big businesses are embracing, from Walmart to IPM to DuPont, and little businesses too are embracing sustainability. Making money is no longer acceptable in isolation from environmental, natural resources, and human factors. And I'm really glad that your student speakers have gotten that message from their education at the GSM. So the lesson here is to not to work for or with people who don't adhere to the highest standards of sustainable business. If you find yourself in a position to hire and manage people, as you might be as a business person, or if you have business partners in your business, it will take most of your time finding the right people to associate with and to hire and aligning them. And there will be many bumps along the road, things out of your control that come out of nowhere, like 911, which derailed my NASDAQ IPO. But what I find is that you're only limited by your own creativity. There are always alternatives that you haven't thought of. And when you're coming to a block and you think that you only have one way, no, there's a thousand other ways that you could have done that. And it's only, you're really only limited by your own creativity because there's so many other possibilities. As recently blogged in the Wall Street Journal by Philip Broughton, the challenge now is for companies to manage ever more rapid change and to satisfy the desires of workers 
who may favor security and stability, but also have freedom and flexibility. He, in his blog, he described this book, The Future Arrived Yesterday, by author Michael Malone, who describes the Protean Corporation, an emerging thing of changing shape, hard at the center and soft around the edges, a highly adaptive form of organization. An enterprise will do best, he says, when it features an amorphous external form adapting to markets, customers, competition, and even ownership as they change, which they inevitably will. Equally important, it will evolve an internal center that maintains the identity and continu continuity of the enterprise over time. But the Protean Corporation, says Malone, is also an idea or pattern for meeting the demands of fresh circumstances. It is flexible enough to match the speed of technological change, moving in and out of new fields as quickly as they rise and fall. And it is ready to seek value across industries and continents. I agree. His description, as summarized in his Wall Street Journal blog, fits very much with what the new corporation must be like. And I think I'm trying to model my new company that way. Some of you don't have jobs yet. Well, that's probably all you can think of right now. But you are privileged to be graduating from the top 40 business school. And as such, and you've heard also this plea from one of your student speaker, is to give back. Volunteer. And I know that this is a real value that uh, is, the GSM uh, does, does with their students, with you, that uh, you do put an emphasis on community service and, and volunteerism, and that's wonderful. The thing about nonprofits is that they sometimes have the best business practices, even better than not uh, for profits I've seen sometimes. For example, I'm on the board of the Organic Farming Research Foundation, and I served um, on the deputy, be, deputy director hiring committee. The hiring process for that deputy director was the best I've ever seen, and I can adapt that hiring process to some of the hiring practices for my own company. I also served for 14 years on the board of Sutter Davis Hospital, nonprofit hospital here in Davis. Janet Wagner, the hospital administrator, is second to none in terms of best business practices. I watched her through those years hire and mold and uh, uh, motivate a management team and then institute continuous improvement and best practices. Maybe you don't know, you're living here in Davis, but Sutter Davis Hospital has won award after award for affordability, for high patient, sco high patient satisfaction scores, high employee satisfaction scores, and high quality scores. My brother um, happens to have a passion for wildlife, but thinking there were low job pro prospects in wildlife biology, he got a law degree. He volunteered for a local chapter of Ducks Unlimited, and now he's assistant general counsel for Ducks Unlimited, where he gets to commune with the ducks and the fish while he cajoles wealthy landowners to put their land into conservation easements and protect it for the ducks and the fish. So the, volunteer, the volunteering just creates such richness for you all that I urge you all to have, always have some volunteerism in your, in your career and also for any employees you might have. So you have to be, as you've heard, uh, to be resilient and adaptive. And actually, I learned that from the bugs, being an entomologist. I learned it first from the bugs because, you know, they say that after a nuclear explosion, that the, things that'll, the only thing that'll be surviving is a cockroach, right? Well, uh, so you have to be equally adaptive and resilient. Wait a minute, did I just compare you to a cockroach? No, uh, no. <laughs> no, you're obviously, you know, adaptability and resilience is, is a key theme with the ever-changing world. Like my student extern who spent his entire uh, college, college time preparing for a, uh, a, a career on Wall Street. And indeed, when he was um, doing an internship, um, he was at Lehman Brothers on the day that it melted down. So then when he came to me as an intern, he said, well, what am I going to do with my life? I just spent my whole, whole time thinking I was going to go on Wall Street. And what he did was, you know, he took a job that maybe not the ultimate job that he's going to have in 10 years, but he's determined to learn and network as much as possible during that job. I started my career without an MBA, but you have one, so you have a leg up on me. Even in a recessionary time, that GSM degree is valuable. Stay true to yourself. It's not just about the money, as you've heard already. The world will be a better place if making money goes hand in hand with doing good. They are not mutually exclusive. Thank you very much, and congratulations.